uh, intelligent machines are already playing a big part in uh, everyday life, including the workplace. Take the British economy, for example. Recent research has found that automation has not only brought more money, but it's also created more jobs. But will science fiction writers be proved correct in their predictions that robots may one day take away our jobs completely? Uh, let's speak to Michael Osborne. Uh, he joins us from Oxford. He's a lecturer in machine learning at the University uh, of Oxford there. Uh, there are real benefits out there. I mean, robots are now doing jobs that humans not only would find boring, but actually be very dangerous for them. Well, I completely agree. And in fact, I wouldn't be working in the field of machine learning if I didn't feel that those benefits were real and something towards which we should strive. Oh, right, but, but, but what are your fears then? I mean, uh, let's right. separate out the robotics from the artificial intelligence, for example. Right, so I mean, the fears are that um, there might be employment impacts from these kinds of technologies. So in particular, in our own work, we've found that as much as 47% of current US employment might be at high risk of automation over the next 20 years. And perhaps even more alarmingly, the kinds of jobs that might come under threat are the kind of low-skilled workers who may be least well-equipped to move into whatever new jobs might emerge. So, so this idea of some sort of working nirvana where people don't have to work, don't have to do menial jobs and everyone will get wealthy, it wouldn't appear to be the case as far as you are concerned. That's right. I mean, so we may achieve a state in which not everyone has to work, but then the question becomes that of ensuring that everyone still has enough means to survive. That's the positive scenario. The short-term scenario is that we might see increasing inequality due to exactly these technological developments. When you look at artificial intelligence and the idea of, of, of teaching, I suppose, a robot to be rational about things. Now, r human beings aren't rational, uh, are we, many of us anyway, but when it comes then to the nuances of how to respond to something, w what problems do you foresee there? Right, so in our work we highlight a number of different tasks that humans still maintain a competitive edge over machines in. So in particular we highlight creativity, social intelligence and manual dexterity as being the three job characteristics that are most difficult to automate. So it's in those capacities that human skills exceed the robots. Of course there are still many frailties of human decision making as well and of course our reliance upon heuristics and biases in decision making is something, as you've mentioned, that we might want to use unbiased algorithmic decision makers to replace. All right, well, look, Michael, stay with us, because um, we can also speak to Jeff Bernstein, uh, president of the Association for Advancing Automation. He thinks artificial intelligence is good for the economy. He joins us uh, from Michigan. Uh, you think it's good. Do you have any reservations at all? I, I, you know, Professor Stephen Hawken uh, said recently that he thought artificial intelligence could actually lead to the, the sort of destruction of mankind. Well, uh, there are experts throughout industry who believe just the opposite of Dr. Hawking. But from my perspective, the discussion should be about what's the real threat to jobs? Is it artificial intelligence? Is it robots? Or is it the inability of companies to stay competitive? In this global marketplace, if you can't compete, you can't keep people and you can't hire new people, you can't grow your companies. If automation is a tool that can help you do that, you have to use it. Well, I don't know if you caught what Michael Osborne was saying just before we, we got hold of you, but he was saying that it's all very well to explain that in terms of the future of businesses, but what about those workforces who simply wouldn't be equipped to be able to change from the sort of jobs they're doing now, which could be superseded by computers, or by, by robots? Well, first of all, there are a lot of jobs right now that people could be filling, that are available to people. And second of all, I think we're overestimating the capabilities of the technology. I mean, I've read through some of Michael's work, and I think it's interesting as a research paper, but to take away that 47% of the jobs in the United States are at risk because of automation, or 35% of the jobs in the UK are at risk, is frankly kind of very misleading. Uh, Michael? Well, so to be clear, the figure we highlighted was for the fraction of jobs that are at technological uh, risk, not that will necessarily be automated away. And I think the real conclusion from our study is that this is a real concern, even if the figures don't end up being as severe as we've highlighted, and that perhaps the most alarming thing is this risk to the lower skilled. So again, that's a theme to which I'd like to return, the idea that the main burden of automation will rest upon the shoulders of those who may not be able to find the jobs that emerge in 
the economy of tomorrow. OK, so he's climbed down a little bit on the figures, uh, Jeff, but, he, but, but you know, he's, he's, he's repeating that point I put to you in the, in the first place. Yes. Well, let me just say that, again, as a theoretical paper, this is interesting. But the practical nature of what I do is talk to people in the business world every day who hire and try and grow their business. So, for instance, recently I was in Baltimore, Maryland at a company called Marlin Steel. And there I met people who had very little training. They're coming from uh, sort of a dangerous neighborhood in Baltimore, frankly, where jobs are not plentiful. But they were able to go to a local community colleges and get the skill to operate a machine and a robot. They're now one of the most critical people in the company. It's not necessarily the four-year university students or the highly educated who are going to be able to benefit from the jobs that are out there. Second of all, you look at what's happened in communities like Detroit. It was ravaged during uh, the difficult days when companies were moving out, sending jobs overseas to China. It's not just the jobs in those plants, but all the supporting jobs around. People who work in restaurants and bars and uh, dry cleaners, bowling alleys, those jobs went away as well. Wouldn't it have been great if we could have kept those jobs and those manufacturing plants running in Detroit by taking advantage of automation? That's completely missed in the analysis that's being done. All right. Okay, gentlemen, I'm afraid we are out of time. Uh, Jeff Bernstein and uh, Michael Osborne, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us here on Impact today. And you can find out how likely it is a robot will take uh, over your job uh, any soon. I think the fear in television is that we're going to be uh, taking over pretty quickly. Uh, you can find a special interactive feature on the website. It shows the likelihood for all kinds of jobs to be automated within the next two decades.